welcome to this session of rapid prototyping. In previous sessions, we have discussed different applications of rapid prototyping like application in design, application in engineering, analysis and planning, application in manufacturing and tooling, and application in reverse engineering. In this session, we will continue to discuss applications of rapid prototyping, but in this session, we will specifically discuss about medical applications of rapid prototyping. We will discuss different case studies and different ways how rapid prototyping can be useful in medical application. So, there are basically four types of medical applications of rapid prototyping. Uh, namely, the first one is manufacturing of medical devices. Uh, other application is customized implants and prosthetics for uh, different patients according to their dimensions, their specific requirements. Then we can use rapid prototyping for surgical planning and we can use rapid prototyping for surgical education also. So the first application is a case study where a rapid prototyping has been used for planning of a cancerous brain tumor surgery. So what was the case? A patient had a cancerous bone in a bone tumor in his temple area that means in his head so because of that uh, cancerous bone uh, this uh, temple area has to be removed and the only access point the surgeon was able to get was to right eye socket so the surgeon has to remove the right eye socket that means the patient will lose his right eye and then he will have to go through the brain so there will be danger of some uh, uh, malfunction of motor function what is motor function in the terms of medical motor function is basically the movements of your eye or your hand your legs other movements physical movements all these are motor functions so there was chance of this motor function malfunction but the surgeon then uh, uh, go through a 3D printed model of rapid prototype and he realized that uh, instead of going through right eye socket, he can operate from the uh, jaw bone also. So, surgeon has planned his surgery uh, by observing the 3D printed model of this brain tumor and he rerouted his surgery instead of from eye socket to jaw bone. And then the eye was saved and also when the surgery was com uh, completed, there wasn't any danger or harm to the motor functions. So, the surgery went well with this previous planning with the help of uh, this 3 printed or additive manufactured uh, brain tumor. So, this is how the rapid prototyping can be useful in planning of the surgery. Uh, the surgeon used SLA model from the 2D CT scan. So first he what he done is he has made a 2D scan 2D CT scan of patient skull. Then he used reverse engineering to manufacture this patient skull from SLA. And then he studied this SLA model and he planned his surgery accordingly. Now another, this is an example of how a brain can be made using rapid prototyping technique from MRI data. Another example of rapid prototyping is planning of reconstructive surgery with rapid prototyping. So what we can do when a patient uh, uh, goes under a, a traffic accident or they have some serious bone fractures then uh, we have to remove some part of skull but uh, that will uh, involve but what will happen is when you are removing some part of this uh, skull then it will uh, make some uh, deformation on the skin so to remove this deformation what normally surgeon do is they will use a manually craved uh, transplant bone and they will place it uh, 
uh, where the operation when the operation is being uh, held so it will give some shape on the skin but this manual process will take so much time and it will also make the time of operation large so instead of that what we can do is we can use SLA prototype of patient skull and then we can manufacture artificial bone in advance that will fit in the hole and during the surgery we just have to uh, place this artificial bone during the surgery the surgeon does not have to manually carve this and uh, when carving the fit with is not guaranteed but when you are using uh, this uh, rapid prototyping technique the fit is guaranteed so this is how we can use it to plan the reconstructive surgery now another application or very famous application is craniofacial reconstructive surgery so sometimes what happens is due to some problems the facial uh, features get distorted mainly the lip and uh, upper lip portions of uh, children's get distorted so there will be this type of uh, deformities in the face so how to remove this so what we'll have do is a surgeon will uh, uh, open up this uh, area it will cut it open and it will do surgery here so it will stretch the upper skin and it will stretch the so surgeon will he will stretch the lower skin and upper skin so that this entirely cover up but uh, the thing is when you do this without actually planning it what will happen the shape is not guaranteed you do not know how it will look so instead what we can do is we can use reverse engineering and we can reverse engineer this uh, uh, deformity and before doing surgery surgeon can uh, operate on this uh, model itself and he can check how the uh, face will look after the surgery and he can even show it to patient that is he uh, actually okay with the look or uh, some changes are to be needed so this is one of the medical applications of reverse engineering all these are planning applications now we are talking about uh, manufacturing applications so we can use uh, reverse engineering uh, or we can use rapid prototyping to build biopsy neural housing now there is a company called baxter healthcare which uses sla and sgz which are two different uh, uh, reverse uh, rapid prototyping techniques and they make this to cater or to create master models for this biopsy needle and then they develop metal castings from that so this is one of the applications where medical tools can be made with the help of rapid prototyping another application of medical tools to be made from rapid prototyping is manufacturing of knee implants so this deep pui incorporation is a supplier of orthopedic implants and they integrate CAD and reverse engineering to manufacture rapid prototype, rapid prototype uh, knee implants. So what they do is they analyze potential fit of implants in a specific patient and modify the design using the rapid prototype uh, components and then once they are satisfied with the design then only they manufacture these implants. Another application of rapid prototyping is in tissue engineering. What, what is tissue engineering? Basically, tissue engineering is when you take tissues or cells from a person's body from different organs and you grow those tissues outside the body and when needed, you implant those tissues in the body again. So, uh, the person's tissues will be taken from the body we will grow them we will make a large number of tissues bigger tissues from them and we will implant those tissues when needed but these tissues can grow in a haphazard manner if not properly guided so we need some scaffold 
to make sure that these tissues uh, grow in a specific area only. So for this tissue engineering, we need some scaffold. Basically, scaffolds are structure where the tissues will grow, and we can use this uh, rapid prototype. Structure or scaffold to make sure that tissues grows in a particular area. So sometimes we use scaffolds to uh, grow tissues of bone, sometimes of uh, livers, sometimes skin, pancreas, ligament, or even bone. So according to the requirement of patient, these scaffolds will be made. Then some cells will be. Uh, Transfer to the scaffold and this uh, when the cell grows cell will take the shape of this scaffold and then this scaffold will be implanted into the spacer. This is how rapid prototyping can be used in tissue engineering. Another application is manufacturing of the stents. Now what are the stents? Stents are basically uh, the structures which will support the uh, artillery or the hollow areas when uh, needed. So, uh, for example, in respiratory system, if uh, your respiratory uh, system is collapsing, then you will need some support to uh, make sure that it, oh, it uh, remains open every time. Or sometimes in uh, heart surgery, in uh, artilleries, if uh, there is not enough space, you can uh, put some stents in the uh, artilleries to make sure that your artilleries cap, uh, keeps uh, open. It will be open all the time. So, you can um, customize these stents because different patients will have different requirements of force, different requirements of uh, area and you can uh, use rapid prototyping. You can use first reverse engineering and then rapid prototyping to customize these stands for different patients. <coughs> also, we can uh, customize intervibrator spacers. Basically, these are spines, uh, these are vibrators are spinal vibrators. So, in the spine, there will be some space, but uh, due to some uh, injury or some accident, we need to make sure that there are enough space between two different uh, 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 two different uh, uh, areas of spine. So you need to make some spaces to make sure that there is uh, enough area between the spinal uh, components, the spinal uh, uh, what we can say organs and you have to use this spacer to fix the spine. So this also needs uh, different dimensions according to the patient, different force uh, according to the patient's weights and uh, their spine structure or where in the spine you need to space them. So we can use rapid prototyping to design and develop this spinal spacer also. So these are different areas of rapid prototyping. There is also this application of cranium implant. Cranium is basically the area of skull which protects the brain. So this uh, this area is known as cranium. So when there is uh, some defect in the cranium, then this has to be removed. But after we remove this due to some uh, say brain tumor surgery, when tumor has to be removed from the brain. So you have to remove this cranium and then you took uh, uh, the tumor out of brain. But then when you do surgery without uh, giving any support here, this area will be distorted, it will be deformed. So, to reduce this deformation, you can uh, put an implant here, but what conventionally uh, people used to do is, they used to do, they used to make this implant, surgeons used to make this implant manually and it will take so much time so, uh, during that surgery, when the implant is being made by the surgeon and the fit is also not guaranteed, the skull should be kept open. So, to uh, reduce this time, what now people are doing is, 
uh, they are planning the surgery they are making sure how much area of uh, cranium need to be removed and accordingly they are manufacturing this implant in advance and during the surgery the surgeon does have to put this implant so these are different areas of rapid prototyping in medical specifically where you can apply this rapid prototyping in medical industry and when it is being used and demonstrated already so this will be all for this session happy learning